Professor Ezzan Adin, Medina Zanotto, Secretary General of OIC, who has sent the greeting for the success of this conference and regrets the inability to be present because of his other greatness. Here I would also like to express our deep appreciation for the outgoing chairperson, Honorable Health Minister of Kazakhstan, Her Excellency Mrs. Selina Kedbekova, for her active role in furthering the OIC health agenda and her support for the work of the steering committee during Kazakhstan's chair. We look forward to working closely with the new chairperson, Honorable Health Minister of Indonesia, in carrying forward the new tasks that lie ahead in pursuit of our common goals in the health sector. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the adoption of the OIC 10-year program of action by the third extraordinary session of the Islamic Summit Conference held at Makka in 2005 was a defining moment in terms of articulating a new strategic vision for the advancement of the country. The historic document has served as a roadmap for the OIC to reform and expand its activities and programs to become more relevant to the broad spectrum challenges of the 21st century. These challenges range from political issues, humanitarian relief and disaster management, human rights, to economic and commercial collaboration for the promotion of science, technology and innovation. The domain of health is an important sector amongst the various areas identified for joint Islamic action in the 10 year program of action. Fully cognizant of the centrality of health to the overall well being and development of the OIC member states, the OIC has steadily expanded the scope of its activities and built several international partnerships to address health related challenges facing the UMA. Our efforts, particularly since 2005, have resulted in many positive outcomes and the OIC is now acknowledged as an important partner in health-related initiatives at the international level. The three previous Islamic conferences of health ministers, that is in Kuala Lumpur, Tehran and Astana, had made concrete recommendations for addressing an array of health issues relevant to our member states and the international community at large. It's a matter of great satisfaction for me that building upon our previous collective efforts, we have been able to finalize the OIC Strategic Health Program of Action, which will provide a framework for focused action and international collaboration for the next 10 years. I am confident that the adoption of this document and its implementation plan by this conference will provide a new impetus to the OIC health agenda and the program and activities of the OIC and its institutions in this important field. I take this opportunity to express my appreciation for the valuable contribution by the member states, the OIC institutions and international partners during the preparation of this important document. We also need to focus on other pandemics and diseases, including malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS, which place a heavy burden on the OIC member states. I request the OIC member states to strengthen their collaboration with the international partners and share the best practices in surveillance, prevention, and control measures in order to strengthen case detection and lowering morbidity and mortality rates. I deeply appreciate the contribution of the OIC member states which have extended financial support to international partners such as the Global Fund and appeal to them as well as the Islamic Development Bank IDB to further enhance their support to the international initiatives against communicable diseases in the OIC member states. Excellencies, I am happy to report that steady progress in the preparation of joint projects by the OIC General Secretariat 
IEB and IAEA for the establishment of cancer data therapy centers in OIC member states from Africa. In this regard, a two-day high-level seminar was held in Chanda at IDE headquarters in September last year. And the next seminar is due to be held in November in Piara. We have already identified a set of recommendations for the projects. The donor countries as well as the countries which are going to be uh, getting the support for this uh, initiative. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the third summit conference of health ministers reiterated the need for promoting collective self-reliance in production and supply of medicines and vaccines and in, in this regard encourage cooperation among member states for the development and harmonization of standards on pharmaceutical and vaccines and public private partnership. In this regard, I welcome the hosting by Malaysia of the technical meeting on development and harmonization of standards on pharmaceutical and vaccines in Kuala Lumpur in October last year, which reviewed the regulatory control of pharmaceuticals and vaccines, discussed challenges in the production of pharmaceuticals and vaccines, and deliberated on the structure of the technical community. It is my hope that our conference will be able to endorse the terms of reference of the technical community and the two-year action plan of the technical community as approved by the steering committee of health health and here in Jakarta yesterday. I further welcome the hosting by the United Arab Emirates, the first meeting of vaccine manufacturers from OIC countries in Dubai in February this year, and the second meeting by Biopharma of Indonesia in Rangoon on 16th June this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the success and sustainability of our efforts in addressing the health-related challenges facing the member states will require integrated and multi-sectoral approach rather than sporadic interventions. We need to ensure that our efforts are pursued in the framework of comprehensive national health strategies and plans which provide for the strengthening of health infrastructure, improving access to health services, and capacity building of health professionals at all levels. In this regard, I will request you to promote networking of medical universities, health education, and medical research institutions, exchange of faculty members, and joint training programs, and exchange of best practices in management of health institutions. Member states can also encourage their public and private sector universities to extend scholarships in the medical field to students from the OIC countries. Such cooperation can take place under the umbrella of the ongoing OIC educational exchange program, which as of now has about 300 scholarships available to it, and 163 students are studying at various levels in our member states. We welcome the offer of scholarships in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy and allied health services offered by the University of Lahore in Pakistan. We also note with great satisfaction the cooperation between the Islamic University, International Islamic University of Malaysia with International Islamic University in Uganda and its implementation plan will continue in the next two years. And under the able stewardship of Indonesia, the OIC member states and institutions will be able to move collectively towards attaining the objectives of the, this health program and raising the standards and health equity across the OIC member states. I thank you very much. Thank you.